right? The problem with this though, with the business card, is like yeah, as I tilt it, and I, I, I make a lot of these. I make these for some uh, very high-end clients like Microsoft and Intel, and I make them really well. Like most business cards will not keep the tracking at this point, but at some point, the angle of the card, if you can see it in my hand, you really can't, um, you can't see what that is. Ah, look at it, yes. Beautiful. Um, I, yeah, it, it won't try because it still uses computer vision. So it's still a computer that has to process that data um, for the um, for it to work on super fast motion. You would need a better computer. And there is, um, I do this a lot. There's a. At this conference next week, uh, NVIDIA is going to be there. NVIDIA has something, uh, and you guys should email them as like, oh, I'm a hacker at Space Apps Challenge, because free stuff is awesome. Uh, they would be very happy to like talk to you about this. And so, tell me you're interested in computer vision, and it's called an NVIDIA... NVIDIA... TK... Um, uh, dev... Card. No, uh, it was a TK Tegra TK. There it is. Uh, this is basically the processor, the Jetson TK. It's 200 bucks if you email them. They might send you one. This is the the processor behind uh, driverless cars, self-driving cars. This uh, has a, a processor that's more advanced than like most of your laptops, right? And that can use uh, computer vision at high speeds. This business card and stuff like that will not, but uh, you know you can. Oh, so the magic of this, right? Uh, and we'll get started in a bit. All right. So actually, yeah, let's get started. All right, rock and roll. Yeah. All right. So set the timer, it's 2.40. We'll go for about 20 minutes and we'll take a break. We'll teach, we'll teach you a lot in 20 minutes, all right? So, hello, welcome everybody. Uh, this is uh, NASA Space Apps Challenge. And we're gonna learn some Unity. We're gonna learn some augmented reality. We're gonna learn some virtual reality uh, using Unity. Uh, we're gonna start with augmented reality. So each of these uh, workshops will be basically broken into 25-minute uh, chunks. And we're going to try to get most of the learning done in 20 minutes <clears throat> with a little bit of intro and a little bit of outro. Um, and uh, this way you'll be able to look back on these. All of these workshops will be available through the site, uh, NASA Space Apps. Links will be provided below. Uh, First, um, and uh, this way you'll be able to look back on these. All of these workshops will be available through the site, uh, NASA Space Apps. Links will be provided below. Uh, first thing we want to learn is uh, AR. Right? Augmented reality is way easier to uh, display, to comprehend, and to make uh, than VR. Also, much less dangerous because VR can make you sick. If you don't do VR correctly, it absorbs all of your senses all the time. Uh, so we learn, we're going to learn the fundamentals with AR, which is augmented reality. Also, it's much more applicable. It's much more easily distributable, right? So you can, um, for example, let's get the good background on here. We had the good background. Ah, oh, we didn't have it anymore. Um, much more uh, dispensable. So this is my business card, right? Very awesome, uh, easy way of showing uh, VR or AR. You take this business card and everybody has a business card. Super easy, it works on every phone and I'll make it full screen. It's full screen. Excellent. Haha. -ha. Full screen. Uh, this is the microphone. It's not my business card, but this is the microphone. Over here you have the business card. And you have an augmented reality experience, right? So this is a 
very fitting, right? Because it's space apps. So this is essentially, most space simulations are not to scale, right? If there was, there'd be a lot of empty space. So, um, but at the same time, this is completely three dimensional. So you could hold this in your hand. You can um, clip this to your shirt uh, one handed. I can do that. Damn. It's almost there. Uh, <laughs> beautiful. Um, so, in 20 minutes, we're all going to learn how to make this. Does that sound good? Very cool. That's right. Here. If I use two hands, I can make this happen. All right, beautiful. Um, so, the, the beauty of this is all going to be recorded, and you're all going to be able to watch this. This is all possible um, because of a software called Vuforia. I've passed this around millions of times um, and shown this demo. Uh, I'm not going to tell you. Did you guys see anything at the corner of the screen? Did you guys notice anything? No, right? Nobody noticed it. Millions of people have seen this demo, tons of other demos. Uh, with Euphoria, they let you have this awesome software, all this awesome technology for free. The only catch is they want you to uh, display uh, this tiny little logo. Their watermark. You see it here at the bottom, right? Nobody will ever see that watermark. So if you want to remove that watermark, they'll charge you, I think, $500 per app, which is like not cheap, but it's also not that much to, to have nobody ever know how you made this. But if you keep that watermark, you use all of their, and what their technology is, is literally not only industry standard, it's enterprise level. This is technology that um, major companies use. It's the, literally the, the highest end augmented reality computer vision technology out there. And you get to use it for free. Pretty awesome, right? You make your own apps. The uh, only thing is you have to keep this watermark in there. Um, that's what we're going to do, right? That's the, what's going to let us make this, this awesome app. Pretty cool. So uh, first thing you want to do is go into Vuforia.com. The Wi-Fi would be the SAP Wi-Fi, so the uh, SAP guest. That's right, and the password is a capital. Here, I'll type it out here. What is it? SAP. Beautiful. And the great part about the community is it's very helpful, right? To help each other is uh, part of what a hackathon is. Um, throughout this event, you're going to rely on each other, right? You, you will all understand this this um, this workshop differently. You all have um, different issues. There, there are a few things that could go wrong in this. I'm going to cover all of them. One of you will pick up one. One of you will pick up the other one. And together, you will all have a complete project. This is not that hard. It's actually um, the reason we're starting this is it's pretty easy, right? It's, it's, uh, a lot of this is done for you because you're using very expensive technology for free. So you all go to Vuforia.com. Uh, right here is Dev Portal. Because what are you guys now? Developers. Developers. So hit Dev Portal. It's going to ask you to uh, log in or register. So you register and you set up all this. And now you, you're going to have a, literally a, uh, a login for life. You can forever use this now. Hopefully I could use mine. Good. Yes. So go develop Euphoria. I am going to do some, something else which is really cool. So I'm going to go to Hollow Cube. I'm just going to Google Holocube and see how I find this thing. Holocube Merge VR Holocube. That's what this is. So this is not just a regular class. This is not just like, this, can, this could not have happened last year. And by next year, you would have been the only ones to know about this thing in your community. And you would have had such a head start. This, what I'm holding here, and what I'm showing on the screen, is the most innovative product 
of CES uh, this year. So Consumer Electronics Show is a, a show of electronics. This product has no electronics and it beat every electronic product. It has no electronics in it, which is really magical. I just made a joke just now and I want to repeat it. So some of you already heard it, but I think it's really funny. It's like going to a dog show and winning without being a dog. Right, so it's like going to a dog show and then a cat wins it. I should work on that joke, but I think there's something really funny in there. Um, this, this product, right, is this. This is an augmented reality tracker. The, the bad thing about doing a, a business card and any two-dimensional object, two-dimensional meaning it's, it's technically three-dimensional, right, but it's really two-dimensional, which is the flat object, is once you lose tracking of one side, you lose tracking of the whole object. This has tracking on all sides, so no matter which way you rotate it, it's going to um, be tracked. And this is how you could play with 3D objects in your hands. It is just as magical and just as awe-inspiring as VR, but much safer, because this can't get you sick, unless you put something really sickening on it or whatever, you know? But yeah, uh, really, the technology itself will not, does not have the ability to actually hurt you. So safer, easier to learn, and also, with VR, one of the biggest problems with VR is movement. How do you move? With this, that's answered for you. How do you move? Very intuitive. You move your hand. It's in your hand. You rotate, right? So that's solved for you. So that we don't have to teach that in these 20 minutes because we're already basically halfway through it. Um, and I'm going to go to scroll all the way down here. Uh, and somewhere in here, there's going to be like developer. It's in here somewhere. Um, I feel like the screen is too big. Let's go back to normal. All right. About. The dev portal, all the way at the bottom. So you guys are going to be clicking on a lot of dev portals because that's what you guys are now dev, so you could dev. Uh, you go in here, and you're going to click on this merge hollow cube. You can apply for this once you get your app done, but we're going to develop for it now. One of the other cool things about the community is before I had this cube, I would needed to develop on it, right? How do you develop on a technology you don't have? Community, right? If anybody in your community has uh, this, you can develop for this, right? As we will today. That's the whole point of sharing, right? If you have, if somebody has a HoloLens, which is like really expensive, and you don't want to buy a HoloLens, don't. Just be like, hey, could I borrow your HoloLens tomorrow? It's really awesome, right? Make sure you give it back, too, because it's like really expensive. Uh, so I'm going to agree that all this stuff, and I'm going to download. This, what did I just download? Did anybody see that? That was like super fast, high-speed internet. Thank you, SAP uh, Emerging Technologies, or SAP Next for high speed. Um, oh, it's too, too little. Did anybody just see what I just downloaded? No, I missed it. Great, you missed it. It happened super fast. Uh, basically, when I hit download, that downloaded this thing called Merge Cube something something uh, SDK dot Unity package. So that's really cool because do you guys know how back in the day, it still happens, but you know it from back in the day, a Word document. When you open a Word document, like somebody emails you a Word document and you double click it, what happens? You guys aren't, like, you guys know Word, right? Yeah, so like it's just Word opens up magically. You're like, oh, how did that happen? Same thing with the Unity package, right? So I don't have Unity open right now, but if I click a Unity package, it's a native file format. So I click that, it's gonna open Unity just the same way Word did in the 80s and 90s. Yes, it. So I just want to download the Unity package? Yes. Uh, and what this, we're going to go pretty fast through this. And we're going to stop and then we're going to uh, catch up because there's a lot of downloads. A lot of them you may or may not have. Uh, do you have Unity already? No. Okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll double back. Just follow along. This will all be recorded. Um, and the question is do I download just that, right? So you go to merge dev dot mergevr.com and you will see the hollow cube we will cover unity um, and do a little unity install prep because that's a little uh, bigger topic so just uh, follow along with me for now all 
Oh, I could have worked online. And all right, so let's make this from scratch, actually. Forget that. You will see when you download Unity and open Unity from scratch from the first, for the first time, you will see something like this where it's asking you for a new project. This is the screen you will see. What you call your project is like what the app will be called. It's like what the folder will be called. So it's like put some thought into it, especially if you're making a lot of projects and they're all called like test project or pre example one, example one. And you're like, oh, which is the example one that I did? Uh, so here we're going to call it um, hollow globe or uh, NASA globe, right? Make it branded so that they'll have to buy it. If you're like, you guys, I called it NASA Globe. Um, we can even put the NASA logo on it. It would be super cool. Uh, so that opens up everything. If I click now on my Merge Cube um, SDK, that will import that package. Actually, I'm going to not do that. Good thing you're not doing this, you're just following along. I mean, you're not following along, you're just watching me. Because I'm going to go pretty fast. Um, we go back to Vuforia. We set up a Vuforia account just by going to developer.vuforia.com. And when we go to um, downloads, let's see, bam, we will get the option of download for Unity. This will download the Vuforia SDK. This is all of the code. Uh, that thousands of engineers have developed over 20 years and a major corporation has purchased for billions of dollars that you get to use for free. And it's a download is uh, like 46 megabytes. So win-win situation, right? And what this technology, uh, what this download will give you is the ability to use all of that technology. Essentially standing on the sh shoulders of giants. If you had to develop from scratch your own um, computer vision algorithms, you can. And there's actually an open source one that while we're downloading this, I'll show you. It's called OpenCV. CV stands for computer vision. If you feel like, oh, I'm really super nerdy and I want to get deep into computer vision, rock and roll. It's an open source uh, computer vision library. I actually run a podcast, so uh, I have not been doing it as much. But if you go to build-run.com, you will see this podcast. If you scroll to like uh, the third page, I think, you will see um, I have like five sections on computer vision. And also on installing Unity. There's a few gotchas in installing Unity. I have a whole live where I install it live and I wait through the whole download. If you feel like you want to install Unity or like you're not, it's not getting it right, uh, the, the first episode is actually me sitting there and installing Unity like with no time-lapse photography. Like it's not like, oh look, it's all installed. Like I'm actually waiting through it. I show you all the other tools you want to download um, basically for free because uh, there's more to it. So in this episode 11, you will see a, uh, a computer vision lectured from uh, a computer vision lecture from Kyle McDonald. He is one of the foremost experts in computer vision. He's an NYU professor. His course on computer vision is actually a one session course. So you'll go and you'll sign up and uh, you'll like have it on your syllabus, but you don't go all year. You go for like four hours one time. This is it. That's the whole course recorded. So all of computer vision, all the history, uh, Everything that computer vision is, is basically in this course. It's like four sections because I run out 25 minutes each. Go see it, it's free. Uh, it's yours. Tuition, NYU, expensive. This is free. Um, he let me do it, so I'm legally allowed here. Uh, so uh, I downloaded this Vuforia Unity plugin, right? It's right there at the bottom of my screen. It's a dot Unity package, which means that when I click it, yeah, boom, it's going to open Unity. So I'm going to click it. It's going to open Unity. It's going to give me this dialog. It's going to say import Unity package. It's going to, I always just say yes, import all. 
it really doesn't even need to show me that. It's like the, that okay box where you're like, okay, yes, obviously, okay. So just hit import. It's gonna import all of the super expensive computer vision algorithms for you. Oh. Another ridiculous dialogue. Like this, it looks so scary. You see this, you're gonna see this a lot if you're developing for Unity. This API update required and it's like, oh my God, make a backup and your whole is gonna crash. Nothing bad ever happens. So just the same thing, just hit, hit, I made a backup, go ahead. It's like some kind of legal reason that they have to like show that to you. Um, it happened, like that one bad thing happened to the programmer once and they just got protected. Exactly, right? But it's a really scary dialogue, just hit okay. Don't worry about it. Do you think in um, classrooms that, like have you had experience with that in like schools where there's all the wet filters and stuff, is that something that people slide to buy or is that something? Um, the question is, uh, uh, so the question is, uh, with web filters, like if you have some kind of internet blocking, there's no internet here behavior. It's like opening a word document, right? You don't actually have to be on the internet. Once you have the downloaded the document, it's the same thing. So you download a package from the internet. As long as you get that package to you, you can use it, a thumb drive, whatever to get that. And there's no internet required. It's all offline. That package gets imported, and it's also a way to share your stuff. Like, so if we make an app or, or a planet here, and we're like, "Oh, let's share this planet," we can make a package, and I can send that package, and you could just double click it. It'll open up Unity and have everything that you had in there. So, a super awesome. That's the way it, it works. It's very um, user friendly. So, I'm going to open up that. Uh, Vuforia that I downloaded. I'm also going to open up the Holocube that I downloaded, right? So two downloads, Vuforia, which is found at uh, Vuforia developer.vuforia.com slash downloads slash SDK. Also going to be at the links. And the Merge Holocube at dev.mergevr.com docs. That should be enough. And you download these two things. First, I click on the Vuforia. Then I click on the Merge Hollow Cube. That is almost it. The only other thing I have to do is when I'm in this Vuforia, Vuforia needs two things to work. You need a license and you need a tracker. Right? The license is what lets you use their really expensive technology and the tracker is the actual thing that it's gonna track, right? So when I'm in, in the Vuforia website, I hit develop, it's going to say license manager and target manager. Target is that. License is um, basically just filling out a form saying that I'm going to develop this app and I want to use your stuff for free. And they're like, sure. It's no, no uh, application process. It's like immediate. They're like, yeah, all right, sure. Here it is. No, like, I'll talk to you, I'll email you tomorrow. It's immediate. So I'm going to go in here, I'm going to say add license key. This is the hardest, one of the hardest parts of the process. And once you see how easy this is, you're like, oh my God. But yeah, so you go in, add license key. I hit development, which makes it free. The app name, which is whatever app you want. It doesn't have to match, it's good if it does. So I'll say NASA uh, Cube, I think I called it or whatever. And that's it. So you click agree, confirm, and then you look over here, you find your, the app name. And you're gonna see this, this is your license key. This is super valuable. Actually it's free, but it's valuable because uh, with this, you unlock all these billions of dollars worth of technology, right? So you copy and paste this key. Everybody knows how to copy and paste, correct? Good. So, now, let's take a look at Unity. Unity looks really scary. There's a lot of uh, panels, there's a lot of options. It looks like an error, like a F-14, whatever the F type of fighter jet that has starts with F and is super fast and complicated. Um, it's super complicated, there's a lot of options. It's not really that complicated. The first thing you really need to know is this right here is the inspector. Uh, all of these panels are very flexible, right? So you can move, rearrange these. Mine may look different than yours, just because I use a layout 
that's called, um, if you go to window layouts, I start with one that's called two by three. That gives me this kind of layout and then I bring this project down here and then I resize this. It's like three mouse clicks or whatever. I call this layout the Lex layout. I think it's in here as the layout. I call it Lex. It's my layout. It's just really comfortable for me to use it that way. You can change them any way you want. Uh, so if it looks different than what you have, it's just because I rearranged it in that way. Cool. So you're going to look here. You're going to see this project panel. In this project window, you're going to um, see all of the things that you have imported and it, all the folder structure, right? So you're going to see Vuforia that I've imported, right? And you're going to see Merge Cube SDK that I've imported. All of these folders. And I could, whoa, zoom in so you can see. Right here in Project. So if I go into Vuforia, I'm going to find uh, a folder called Prefabs. Prefabs is a new word. Who here is a new word for, for anybody? Who here is a new word, right? Prefabs? Unity could have been really, really difficult. And they would have made, they could have been, well, a prefabricated asset is a combination of um, asset scripts. No, no, no. They're like, we're not even going to use the word prefabricated asset because that's just too long. We're going to call it prefabs. What does a prefab mean for you as a beginner? It means drag and drop. Honestly, that's what it is. So if you are a beginner and you see the folder called prefabs, inside that prefabs folder will be prefabs. And what do you do with them? You drag and drop. All right, so that's what we're going to do. You've seen me take, make every step of this app. Nothing has been like hidden or whatever I, from, a, from scratch. I clicked on the folder called prefabs. In that folder, there are prefabs. They have a little logo, like you see a little icon is like a little blue box. I take this prefab just like that and I drag it onto anywhere, especially on this scene, right? This scene and this hierarchy are the things that are in my, in my actual, the same way you're a Hollywood director and you have a scene, you put stuff in your scene, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna take AR camera, meaning augmented reality camera. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna drag it into my scene. Right? Drag and drop. I could drag it literally anywhere here. Bam. Drag and drop. No magic. Everybody knows how to do this, right? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to drag in a multi-target. The reason I'm dragging in a multi-target is that's what Vuforia calls a cube. Pretty simple. They don't want to call it a cube because like if it's like a rectangular prism or whatever, then they get really like, oh my god, people are like, oh, it's not, it's exactly a cube, there's one side as well. So multi-target just means cube, multiple targets, right? I click on this. So I've only dragged and dropped two things from the prefabs folder. Okay. I click on, and then you see them here in the hierarchy window. I click on multi-target, which is the cube, and it's going to be like, what, what kind of cube is this? Like, just what's, what's on the cube? Because we imported the uh, merge SDK, all of these patterns are already magically imported. So you click on the multi-target. This inspector window is context sensitive. So anytime you click on anything, the inspector window will change and show you what's in there. So uh, what, what, it will show you the properties of what you have just clicked, right? So I want to see the properties of this multi-target. It's going to show me the properties. The first thing you see here is database empty. If I just click that, I click merge cube, that populates it. So now, you could actually zoom in, and zoom is a regular mouse scroll mouse wheel. And uh, yeah, let's get some shortcuts, right? When you're in Unity, the most important thing is how you move around in Unity. You're going to be moving around in Unity a lot, and the, the, the easier that is for you, the easier your whole life is, right? So um, regular mouse scroll wheel up and down is to zoom in and out. 
and then also kind of how you keep your hands. I work in Unity so much that I realize that my hands are always in the same place, right? Just kind of like if you're a piano player, you would uh, keep your hands in the, you know, the, the guitar player, whatever. You have your hands in the position with the most accessibility. I keep my hands, uh, my left hand kind of over here with the command and option keys. So if I hold down option, you'll see my cursor turn into an eyeball, right? If I now drag with that eyeball, I could rotate around things, right? Super important. Rotating around 3D objects is how you see the other side. It's which separates 2D from 3D. If you want to go 3D, you're going to look at the other side of it. The only other um, key, right? So I'm holding down option. If I hit command, my cursor turns into a hand, and now I can pan. So pan, zoom, rotate, that's really the basics. That's the fundamentals. So I can see now my multi-target has... Uh, it's already populated. It says top right, stuff like that. And I, I'm going to now click on AR camera. And that's going to give me the properties of the AR camera. I'm going to open a Vuforia configuration. And I'm going to paste in that code that I had, the API code from the Vuforia website. This one, the license key. Paste that in there. And basically, that's AR completely done. The next part is what's going to show up on this cube, right? It's working. It's going to work right now. Actually, there's one more thing. This is an awesome gotcha. So all of you at the end of the, in the middle of the night are going to be like, oh, I, it's all working. I got everything right, but it's, something is not working. There's one more checkbox. And it's right here. If you look here, it's going to say data sets. Load merge cube data and activate. If you don't check those two, none of this will work. <laughs> Huge gotcha. Take a picture of it, post it on YouTube, on Twitter, be like, this is the answer to all the world life's problems. It's this, those two check boxes. No, seriously, in the middle of the night, you're gonna be like, oh my God, I've been struggling for hours. Our whole team is stuck and we can't, we can't succeed because something is wrong. And you'll be like, did you check those two check boxes? And then you'll be like the hero. And they'll be like, oh my God. And they'll carry you on their shoulders and give you beer and stuff. Super awesome. Uh, so that's basically AR. There's one more thing now, right? We want to have something cool show up on this cube, right? Yes? Good. Right. Um, this, there is, all right. Who here knows how to make a globe from scratch? A globe, an earth? Does anybody know how to make an earth from scratch? Right? How would you how would you even start? Right? But then, you know, how about the clouds? How about the animation? How about the the night cycle and the dark side? So much cool stuff, right? It's just, it's all the stuff that I want in my globe. And if I wanted to start making that, it would take me all night just to make that globe. Now, let's do an exercise here. All right, this is how we're going to make all of our apps, especially in a hackathon. Let's say, uh, and you can even close your eyes, right? Go imagine that your favorite store, whether it's a, uh, you know, a Home Depot or a Radio Shack or, you know, a Ferrari dealer or like, you know, a clothing store, whatever. Whatever your favorite store is. Imagine you walk into that store one day, today. Imagine you walk in there today. And you go in there and you see an aisle that says free. It's your favorite store. Right? It's not just like the store with all free stuff or crap stuff. Like it's your favorite store. <laughs> Would you go into that aisle? Yes. Yes, right? 100%? Not like 99%. Every, every one of you, right? We'll go into that store. Unity has that store where, and it is one of my favorite stores actually, and it does have that aisle. Um, and I walk into it all the time, and I walk into the aisle all the time. What that store is called is called the asset store. And what we need 
That planet, that thing that we want to show up on the AR, is an asset. It's a digital asset. Digital assets are a way of having value without actually an object. So I can sell a globe without actually giving you a globe or having to like have raw materials. So if you actually type in asset store into Google, I've, I usually do this on Google because I can do multiple tabs. I'm like, you'll notice me, I'm a tab uh, a holic, if you will. So I have billions of tabs open all the time. And by the end of this, you will, I will also have billions of tabs open right here. So I go to asset store. No, if I just type asset store into Google, it will give me the Unity Asset Store. There's only one asset store on Earth. It's this Unity Asset Store. So if I am in here, I will click on the search. Everybody knows how to search, right? I will type Earth. And I can go and say, I only want to go to the free aisle. So I'll click on free only. So, um, and there's a ton of free Earths already. And the Earth should be free, right? Like, I don't know. No, maybe not. Maybe you should charge for it. I'm going to pick this one uh, from Digital Ruby. This is my buddy Jeff. Uh, you can't pay him for, this, for this, this globe. You can't. I mean, you maybe you'd be able to. But you can like follow him on Twitter. It's Digital Ruby. You can email him at the end of this and be like, we made an app with your globe. Um, I might tweet him this stuff or a picture of this globe with you guys or whatever uh, that we used it. It comes with all this, free earth asset, easily create planets, night lights, detail texture, crowd later, rotation, icosphere, and UV, I don't even know what that is. Um, it's probably important to the earth. The earth needs it. It's a shame we didn't think about it, but he did. Uh, what did I just do? I just hit open in Unity, and oh, update. So I would hit update, you would just hit install, or, or get, whatever, get for free. That's how you would get it. That's it. It's just a bunch of clicks. You will get this whole earth just by clicking. Not paying anybody. Nobody pulled out their credit card at any point in this process, right? This is all free. And then basically, yeah, import. That's what I want. Mm. Done. I thought I had time like to take a bite of a cookie. No, no, no time for a bite. No cookie bite. Come on, exactly, right? So now I have to like I have to see what I, I was gonna I could have just waited and made you think it was taking longer. So right here I go back into my project window and I see everything that I've imported. All this free stuff. I go into Earth, the folder. Not Earth the planet, because we're already in Earth the planet, right? Um, and I'm going to see something. Any folders here look familiar? Does anything look, look like, uh, like we should be doing here? Or does it just look like gibberish? What do you guys think? What's that? Is it a prefab folder? Bam! Oh, and guess what? There's only one prefab in there. Doesn't get any simpler than that, right? And what are we going to do with this prefab? It's going to default to the most recent uh, drag and drop. Drag and drop. <laughs> so I'll drag and drop it here. Do you drag it onto the AR cube? Very good question. So I did drag it onto the AR cube. But here, if you look at my hierarchy, everything is equal. Everything is on an equal tier, right? Everything's on an equal uh, horizontal plane. What, what did you do to get the... So I dragged it on here. Oh, and then you zoom. So the Earth is actually massive. So you scroll wheel all the way out to see the whole Earth. Um, and this is where we'll start with the first, uh, the first of our modifiers, right? The first ways we can edit stuff. So this Earth is obviously really giant. If I look at this cube, I'll be somewhere deep inside the Earth and I'll have to throw the cube across the room to even see the Earth, which is good if you want to do like scale models and you'd be like, oh, the moon is on like 38th Street and we're over, you know, but um, we don't want to do that, right? So we want to make the Earth a smaller scale model of the Earth. And it'll be cool because you can hold the Earth in your hand. It's not cool if it's like a real size Earth. Nobody's excited, right? But if it's like, oh, it's in your hand. Uh, so I'm going to go literally on the top of this screen. You see these, uh, what's... 
Does the screen not extend that far? It, just far enough. You have move, rotate, and, and scale. The shortcut keys for these are W, E, and R. So if you see a, a change, the, uh, this right here, this colorful thing in the middle, is called a gizmo. That lets me, with a mouse, easily change things. So if I click on, if I click on the, the scale here, that's going to turn that gizmo into this like series of cubes. With three dimensions, we have a lot of options. We can scale in any dimension, so we can make like a short, uh, short uh, disc-like Earth. We can make like a elongated Earth. Right, but we want to make we want to scale it in every direction at the same time uniformly. So to do that, I'm just going to click on the middle, the very central cube. You see this cube right in the middle, the one that's white. I'm going to just click and drag that down. And that's it. That makes the Earth really, really small. And wow, it has to get really small. Wait, where's the Where's this? Aha. Now, the other thing, now that the earth is really, really small, there's something really important you have to do for AR. For AR, uh, especially this implementation, you want to make the earth a child of this object. Right? And it works just the same baby ducks work. When the mommy duck moves, the children move along with it. So, with this, if I don't parent it, the earth is going to show up and I'm going to move this cube around and the earth will still be there. I want the earth to be a child of this cube. So when I rotate, the earth will go with it. Right? So I want to parent this earth to this cube. This is going to be the parent. How do we do this in Unity? Ah, damn it. Yes, you drag and drop. Uh, there's no advanced coding necessary, no like uh, quantum algebra, no. Uh, you basically take the earth and you drag it onto the multi-target. Done. Dragged, dropped. That's like technically only one click, right? If you hold it and you let go, that's only one click. So in one click, you have now parented an object. Now if I look at the inspector, right? The inspector will give me the properties of any object. Now that the Earth is parented to the multi-target, its coordinate system is based off of that parent. So it's got all these weird numbers. It's like it's got an X coordinate of like minus eight and the Y of minus one and minus four because I've been dragging it all over the place. And I don't really want that. I want it to be like right here where the cube is. I want it to be right with the parent. So with that, I could either type zero for all these, right? Zero, zero. Or if I click here, I could hit reset. And that would reset it to, oh, but that also reset the scale back to its also giant self, right? So I want to scale it down. I could also enter a number for the scale. I could be like 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and point, and point 0.1. And now that Earth is like a pretty good scale. Let's see. Hey. No, it's still a giant scale. So I would go, go 0.01. Nice. Good. It's still pretty big. I'm going to go 0 0.001, a thousandth of the size of the original Earth. Hey everybody, lunch is served uh, over in the coffee okay, bar area. We got pizza, um, salad is idea. on its way. It should be here any minute. Uh, please go uh, grab some lunch go and zero stick zero around zero. because Five. at 12.45 in about 15 minutes, so it's like we're gonna have a presentation right? by oh, Space with Sarah. Now? Come on. Go to. Um, and that's the cool thing about Unity. You're doing 3D problem solving. So uh, scale, proportion, rotation, position, all this stuff is important. All this stuff uh, you can change. So literally at this point here, right now, I have everything I need. This, if I now, with Unity, there's two things you can do. You can hit play at the top of here and you can play it. It will play literally from my laptop. And I can test it. So this will use my webcam from my laptop. 
from the top, it gets put to the top, and it's still has an accent. This is where it was originally. Make sense? So it's where we have a little more yeah, so now I'm gonna I'm actually gonna take a or essentially I'm gonna see if I could I'm gonna build this onto my phone. Because I know my phone camera is better. Oh wait. Yeah. Yeah, let's do okay. Let's do this and I'm gonna build this onto my phone and we'll all pass this around. And I could hit maximize on play over here. Oh get this. Disgusting soil and green out of here. It's horrible. They just they just bring like cases of the soil and green. I shouldn't talk about it if they're around here, but like they bring cases of this to the hackathons and like every hackathon there are people like pouring it down the drain and like trying to get rid of it any single way. Like you'll see at the end, like you can't even give it away. Like pizza, okay fine, I'll take pizza. Like but like the soil and the green, you're like you can't even throw it out. Like the garbage won't the New York City won't take it. They're like, no, 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 not soil, it. sorry. I don't know if you want to know. It might be good stuff. Like, who knows? But it just tastes so bad. And they have, like, they dare have another flavor. And yeah, why do they... You're better off not knowing. <laughs> There's a reason they don't put it... <laughs> it's 20% your daily poison, too. It's like... All right, everybody... Here, where's the angle? Wait, the angle is going this way. Okay. Here. It's gonna work. Everything is upside down. I'm gonna rotate this. Hold on. Uh, See, it's actually on the front of it, so I'm just going to take the earth and I'm going to move it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. If you have it in. Okay. Like, what happens if you uh, hide the face, the front face? Will the cube be displayed in front of the, of the sphere? I believe so. I, I, I'll, I think I understand what you're saying, um, and I'm trying to repeat it. But first, I want to take a picture because I'm going to forget that this even happened. I want to prove, but while it's still working, it's very important. Because later on it may not work. Where is it? It's gonna, yeah, exactly, right? Which is the way. Ah, oh, this is perfect. Oh, it's a photo of a photo. Are you taking a picture of the picture? <laughs> All right, ready? <laughs> this way. Oh, no, then I was covering you guys. How about over here? Uh, this is the way. Uh huh. You cover. Oh, I'm covering too much of it. I'm going to hold it in my hand. Uh huh. That's what I'm going to do. I'll hold this. Yes, I think it did it. Good. Let's hope so. Okay. Um, the question was... So if you take the, the, the square and you want to turn it like with the top face behind the... Will, it, will, the, sphere, will, will the sphere still be trapped? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, you're saying... Uh, it's even better, right? That's even more magical. Watch this. So the question is, I see the globe on top of this cube. Very cool. What happens if the globe is behind the cube? And what would it... What? Yes, that's my point. Okay, good. Not only that, but it occludes the cube, so it knows that the cube is there, and it occludes the corner of the cube. So it means I can have another element on the And now watch, if I go in front of the cube. It's better if you have the cube, right? We started, we started this because this cube won the uh, most innovative product in CES this year. 
It's not even an electronic, and it won a contest for electronics. If you make an app with this cube, we have this cube here. You can go to the website and get your own cube. This cube is going to be in every store and every Best Buy. And if your app makes a NASA Earth on top of this cube, it's going to be a launch title. They're going to be like, oh, what could I do with this cube? Well, you can make an app that shows the Earth. And if you notice, this is not a crappy Earth. <laughs> not only is it clear, absolutely free from the asset store, it's a digital ruby. And it even has the night. So when it, it's dynamic, if you shine light on it, it will, it will give you the daylight. And if you shine, if you have a, a night in the dark, the lights will come on. But how do, how do right from the other side of the earth. How Super genius. Such a model because it's a very high grid, very high uh, resolution. Yes. Yeah, how do you build it? Now we have it here, but let's say I want to build a new one from scratch. Okay. Oh, let's go for it. It'll take you a few a few days. Also, Everything he did. Uh, you can see it's been updates. You know, he does this all the time. Uh, yeah, you would do it the same way you would do it. You would create one texture for the earth, you create one texture for the day, one texture for the night, you would make a separate shader that detects light, and the one that does not have the light is going to show the night texture with all the lights on it, right? So this, and the clouds. If you, as a professional, have to reproduce this 3D model, yeah. I want the Mars. Yeah. How long? Uh, three seconds, man. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to get a free one or I'm going to buy it from the asset store because somebody already has Mars okay, mapped. I already have it. I literally have bought Mars this week. No, no, okay, okay. Because you, need, you need the custom thing. You need a very custom thing, which is not Yeah, well, then that's super more expensive, right? Yeah, yeah okay. But, okay, I have a client and reproduce uh, my car. Yeah. How much? Well, yeah, so then they start, you know, that's a, then you okay. start a conversation. So this? Yeah. It's not this, it's, uh, it depends, you know, it depends on uh, lots of factors. But once you start talking, you know, business stuff, once you start talking of costs, um, it's kind of outside this workshop. But yeah, if you're interested, we could, we could definitely talk about some stuff. Question. How do you register your unique object to be uh, a virtual uh, so the tracker, right? So how do you register a tracker? Uh, so let's say that you don't want to use the, the, the merge cube. Let's say you want to use your own business card. We will cover that in the next section. We have ooh, half hour. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll cover how to use a custom, right? So uh, in the next, this is about the end of this session. Uh, you will find this video on, um, oh, first of all, any questions? That's a good question. And basically the question was, if I don't want to use the merge cube, and I want to use a custom image or a custom object, how do I go about doing that? It's a very good question. Yes? Oh, all the license, all the code is on the license, right? So you have to put it on, or you can access like the code in any event. No, so the question is uh, the license code. The main secret ingredient, the secret key to all of this is your Vuforia license. Uh, you actually need to, Vuforia, you have to download the Vuforia SDK, which is a Unity package. You click and open Unity with that, and it in installs the, all the code. In order to activate that code, none of that code is going to work until you go into the Vuforia site, create a license, and copy this key. If Unity will not know what your license key is, and actually, it's happened to me with some of my old apps. If you don't update it, um, if, if you, each license has like a certain number of uses, your app will stop working. Or the, the camera part of it will start working, the, the, the augmented reality stuff will stop working. But it, for what it is, all of this was completely free. We haven't used our credit card to make any of this. And what have we made here? We've made a hollow cube earth. These cubes are not even out yet. So you now, uh, since, what's that? Oh yeah, the question, right? So the question is, uh, yeah, it's underneath. So the question is, how do you buy this cube? How do you get one of these magical toys? It's not even out, but as a developer, you can contact the company and tell them that I want to make an augmented reality application using this cube, and they'll send you one. And I have one now, so if you want to make an app, we can test it. But also, I used to test this before I had the cube,
I would test it just by going online and finding a picture of the cube. It works on a picture of a cube. You could take a picture right now with your phone. It's going to work on that picture. It's computer vision. So you can fool the computer vision pretty easily. Yeah, you could do a photocopy. Uh, you could print it. This is actually the same exact size of a Rubik's Cube. So if you buy a Rubik's Cube and you print all these sides, it's probably easier just to fill out the form and I'll send you one and it's foam. But yeah, you could do that. Um, and this is the future. This is the way where you can have not just any, any, anybody with a VR headset, not just anybody with uh, special technology, anybody with a phone can access this. And you can make regular apps. You could use regular uh, PC, Linux, and Mac apps. So basically, any, any computer of any shape and size, even TVs, you can make this. Uh, and when this comes out, having your app as one of those apps that uses this cube is just mind-blowing. And all free, right? So, other questions? One last, um, you know, to get the cube, we can register on that form that you can see in dev.mergvr.com, right? Yes. And I highly recommend it. This is, this is, this is, yeah, yeah, do it more, yeah. Uh, yeah, so please, and tell your friends, the more of this you have, um, all of developers, as a developer, my favorite thing is to be ahead of the game. To when there's a technology, I know that it's coming and I can really make apps for it. When a HoloLens, the, the HoloLens itself right now is not actually a, a commercial version, it's a developer kit. So they give you the HoloLens so that you can learn how to develop before it comes out. The magical thing, and we talked about this right in the beginning, is that most of this technology you have, this iPhone, this Android, uh, the Vive, are all development kits. You don't need to buy a special, any special hardware to develop for it. You can use the consumer grade stuff you already have. Super awesome. Uh, so yeah, another question in the back. Question, yes? Personal version of Unity, yes. Uh, Unity is, oh, really magical. We'll close this on, the, on this really cool anecdote. Um, imagine that you had an uncle, right? And your uncle had uh, a race car, like a Ferrari, a really expensive car, but it had like an automatic transmission where you know how to drive it easily. And imagine you had a license and you know how to drive it. Imagine you even sucked at driving and you like crashed everywhere. Your uncle's like, yeah, don't worry about it. And you can borrow my Ferrari Anytime you want. I'll pay for the gas, I'll pay for the insurance, just um, borrow it. Take it and play with it all you want. The only thing is you can't change the license plate and you can't use my cup holders. <laughs> She's like, right, would you still drive that Ferrari? Like, yeah, of course. So that uncle is Uncle Unity. <laughs> Unity has a software package that is literally $12,000 a year. <laughs> And they say you can use it all you want for free. The only thing is you can't use the, the cup holders, which is kind of like the water shaders, the advanced water shaders. You know, like you can't make that T-Rex ripple effect in the water. So, and you can't use the custom license plate. It basically has to say made with Unity when it starts. The rest is free. So, thank you, Uncle Unity. Uh, thank you, guys. Is there more questions? Yeah, rock and roll. Thank you all for uh, being part of this. This is probably more than 20 minutes. It's probably a, an hour. Uh, but in that hour, we learned uh, how to make augmented reality using the Merge Holocube. And the cool thing is you make something uh, using this SDK. You don't actually have to have the Holocube with you. You can t look at any Holocube on the internet and it will work. So making stuff for prototype technology that doesn't even exist yet is what hackathons are about. That's what this is. Um, and you can be part of it, right? With Unity, all of this, your imagination is your limit. So let's, uh, let's wrap this up. I will do a quick one of how to do some other objects with other objects. Right? How to do, use, <laughs> I will do some stuff with stuff. Um, we're, gonna <laughs> we're gonna use uh, different trackers, different markers, targets. We're gonna use different targets and use some different assets. So instead of making a globe on a cube, we'll make a cube on a globe. Or something like that. No. <laughs>
<laughs> but we can. We absolutely can. Uh, so that was it. Uh, thank you, NASA. Space apps. Thank you, uh, SAP Next. Uh, SAP Next. Next Gen. Next Gen. Uh, for the internet, coffee. Say cookies. I was going to say coffee and cigarettes. That seems like the right thing. Next year did not give us any cigarettes, for the record. Um, they did give us coffee, which is awesome, right? So thank you, uh, thank you for that. And now we're going to go in a little bit of depth. We'll, we'll also uh, we'll backtrack and see if anybody is, uh, is, is lagging behind, and we'll make sure everybody's caught up. Everybody could make apps now. So if you watch that video, there was no trick, camera trickery other than like when I had to chew the cookie, if that got cut out. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I did show a cookie for a minute there while I downloaded very quickly, but uh, that was it. That's basically AR at its finest. Uh, VR works very similarly. We can actually cover that, but there's more fun in AR, I think, at this point. But let's see. All right, that was it. Thank you all for watching. Uh, and that's a wrap.